Hey y'all, it's Brandon with Voodoo Forge. The U.S. Post Office contacted me recently about my mailbox. Apparently, it was not up to par. Now, about eight years ago, somebody hit my mailbox with what I'm assuming was a bat. It was a bat-like object anyway. And uh, so, you know, all that stuff you've heard your whole life. You know, defacing a mailbox is a federal offense. So I was like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, basically, unless a cop is standing next to your mailbox and somebody uses the cop to hit your mailbox, nothing's, nothing's going to happen with that. So I was like, well, you know, if they're going to bash mailboxes, I'm going to make me a mailbox that is bash proof. And I hadn't, hadn't got around to it. So, um, even though the mailbox has been the exact same for eight years, apparently now is the time that the post office is sick of. So, I'm finally making my mailbox. Okay. Maybe they have a point. Okay, so here she is. She took a licking. And their point was that they couldn't fit packages inside. So, we're just going to make a new one. Here are my materials. Well, most of my materials that I'm going to use making my new mailbox. I've got a, a big CO2 tank bottom. Uh, I've got uh, the steel to make the door, weldable hinges. And my post is a 4-inch tubing, 3-eighths uh, walled piece of steel. Now, I did have enough of this to make the post where I could set it in the ground, but I'm um, checking it out. Your mailbox has to be breakaway because if somebody hits your mailbox, which is an inanimate object that's off of the roadway, you're actually responsible for them because they hit an inanimate object. So, anyway, Breakaway post. So this four by four, I'm going to trim this down where it'll fit inside. This will be what's actually sitting in the ground. And then that post will be, go over part of it and be bolted to it. So, you know, that way if one of the enormous dually pickup trucks that drives up and down my road hits my mailbox, it'll break. But uh, the other, another interesting thing I'm going to be using here, this is copper. Now this is a piece of, uh, uh, this is three inch three and a half inch, quarter inch wall copper tubing. And this is what I'm gonna be making the flag out of. I don't work with copper a lot. It's fun to work with, but um, <clears throat> yeah, that's what I'm using for the flag. So first I'm gonna get started with the door and everything on the mailbox. So I gotta do some grinding. This little piece of one inch by eighth inch scrap is going to be, I'm gonna weld this on right here. And this will be the piece that my hinges weld to to hold my door on. So first thing I need to do is put a bevel here and uh, and clean up the inside here so I can weld this on and then I can figure out where my door's going so I can get it cut. Another handy thing about the leaf on my welding table is when I'm working with something like this, I can set it in there and it holds it and keeps it from rolling around. First thing I'm going to do is tack this inside of here. Not an easy angle. Down there. Sorry, I had my camera off when I thought I didn't. Uh, I tacked it inside and then flipped it over and just ran a bead around the outside in that bevel I ground. 
So when I cut this, I can grind that, it'll be seamless. I've marked off about how much I'm gonna need for my door, so now I'm gonna cut it off the parent stuff. So I got my door, cut off my parent stock, and this is some old material that's been laying around for a while outside, and it's got good pits in it. So I'm gonna keep that on the outside, because I like that. That, that, uh, that is material that I cannot recreate. So I'm gonna leave that, because I want that rough look. Now, here's my weldable hinge. If you don't know what a weldable hinge is, it's a hinge, doesn't have any holes in it for screws or anything, and it's not galvanized, so it's not a problem to uh, weld it on anything. And you know what? I'm going to measure that a little bit just for tools and giggles. Yeah, that is about where we want it. Before I get too much further, this, is, this wood, I don't think it's going to work. I've got to cut this off here and then I'll grind it round with the rest of it. Yeah, I don't use my torch a lot, but... I am well aware there is a myriad of people out there who could have cut that a lot cleaner. But I'm not one of them. Okay, y'all, I'm sorry the lighting is going to be a little bad on this, but time got away from me a little today. And so I'm having to do this in the evening. And I'm mixing a two-part epoxy, which I am then going to use to glue a magnet onto this tab that I welded in here. And the reason why I'm going ahead and doing this tonight is because it takes a while for this epoxy to set. Now originally my plan was to use a pop rivet to put this on, but the pop rivet would not cooperate. So I made a mistake. I got some cheap pop rivets. I got my epoxy on. Just gonna. Uh, you know what? Since it's a magnet, I don't think I have to clamp it. I think I can just leave that. 
but that is the magnet to shut my door on my mailbox. Well, the magnet's in. Well, that part of it's done. Well, y'all, we're going to have to end this one right here. Uh, in the next video, I'll be making the flag. But so far, I've gotten the door done, except for the pull handle. And I've gotten the tank cleaned off. And when I was cleaning the tank off, yeah, that, that rust will cover everything so heavily, you can't really tell what's going on. And there's this blue tint. So it was an oxygen bottle, and uh, some of that's still there. So I'm going to try to keep that, that finish, that kind of uh, distressed... Patina. Uh, so I'm gonna, I've decided I'm going to clear coat the box when I'm done to keep as much of that as I can because I, I like that kind of rough uh, industrial, industrial uh, look. But uh, this, is, this has turned into a longer project than I thought it was going to be. So this is going to have to be a few videos. So bear with me. I've got more coming soon. Anyway, I hope y'all got something out of this and y'all behave yourselves.